I'm CAD CEO John Reed. We're adding to our SR and ED program. You'll recall that every month uh, Dr. Russ Roberts provides us with an alert and an update. And now he's creating some educational videos. Those videos will touch on some best practices, best practices for claiming, and also understanding some of the considerations and requirements, the new requirements from the CRA. Our goal is to help you better use the program with the objective of creating innovation and more enterprise in Canada. Russ, can you comment on some of the best shred practices? I see you've called these your five required proofs. Yes, John. Over the years, uh, we have seen that really there are about five elements of eligibility that if one has done good due diligence on and been able to document why you're correct on these points, that the claims should be treated relatively favorably by CRA. The key is that you're correct, that their issues are addressed, and that you can show how you did it. Uh, the first one really is the issue of what is it you're able to actually do? What is it you're able to design? What is it you're able to produce? What are the current capabilities? And secondly, what is your goal? If your goal is within the boundaries of these capabilities, we would normally not anticipate to see eligibility there. On the other hand, if you can show that the current base of capabilities, the technological base level for it specifically, does not allow you to achieve the goals that you want in a product or process, then you would anticipate that there was eligibility. And the key there is to be able to show that gap what we call, or I call, the technology gap. That gap is defined by what CRA focuses on, which is the technological problem, the ability to express the gap, and the obstacles, which are the missing links that you can't, that don't exist, that you have to develop. And then CRA very much focuses on this, your ability to show what was the experimental analytical sequence that occurs, the process that occurs and that something happened, and how that actually links to the work that was done, who did the work, and the cost. If you can put together that full package with support along the line, you should be able to meet CRA's expectations if truly what you've written is real. Russ, I see you've outlined some new challenges You've actually called them the seven key considerations for the CRA. I guess as a CFO, I'm going to be very interested in that. Where are these keys? Where are they derived from? And what's their implication? Right, John. I guess I should have actually said seven key considerations of CRA in the way they are actually instructing their reviewers to look at your claims for the SRNED tax credits. Uh, these come from the manual that they have issued to the field on how to conduct a review. They emphasize the type of evidence that may lead to the decision that a claim is ineligible. When you put together your claim, it's going to be very important that you think about this because a lot of what you do looks like standard practice and looks like it is evidence that it does not have that shred eligibility. The challenge for you is to show, yes, this documentation, this evidence of your processes does tie to the project and to the elements of the project, the analytical and experimental process, how it does so, and that this does not actually indicate that these considerations are indicated by the material presented to CRA.